Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Ipshita again. Let's try something new. Let's try learning one disease a day fast. Few points to remember and let's go with that. Okay. So uh, today I'm reading from an uh, article from Indian Journal of Ophthalmology and today we'll be talking about sympathetic ophthalmia. Okay. So this is a bilateral diffuse granulomatous pan uveitis. So the interesting part about this disease is there's a penetrating injury or a surgery taking place in one eye which we will call the inciting eye and there's an inflammation happening in the other eye too so it's a bilateral disease so this uh, other eye is the sympathizing eye okay this eye did not get injured or did not undergo a surgery but has inflammation so it's a bilateral disease now there are many disease mechanisms proposed for this disease the most common believed one is the autoimmune one okay so what all do we need to remember it's obviously a rare disease you know so 0.2 to 0.5 percent is considered after any penetrating injury now if we look into the histopathology it's actually a question in uh, ms exams about histopathology of sympathetic ophthalmia or delin fuchs nodule as such so important things are it's a panuveitis there's thickness of the choroid ciliary body and iris there are all these uh, lymphocytes epithelioid cells giant cells which come into the picture in the early infiltrations they cd4 cells and uh, t cells and later on they cd8 uh, suppressor and cytotoxic t cells now delin fuchs nodule is important uh, so what are these Delin Fuchs nodules? They're quite classical of sympathetic ophthalmia, also sometimes seen in uh, VKH syndrome. There are lymphocytes, histocytes and altered uh, pigment epithelial cells here. Okay, So there are three types. First type is when there is focal hypoplasia and aggregation of the retinal pigment epithelial cells. In the second type, which is classically known as the Delin Fuchs nodule, it consists of epithelioid and lymphocytes covering the dome of the RPE. So in the first type, there is only RP hyperplasia. Second, there is RP hyperplasia covered by epithelioids and lymphocytes. And in the third time, there's a degeneration of the overlying RP leading to a disorganization of the Delin Fuchs nodule. Okay. If we look into the pathogenesis, so uh, first we have to understand that the eye is an immune privileged uh, organ. Okay. So during an injury or during surgery, when any, uh, you know, iris structure, iris tissue comes out, there are they're exposed to the conjunctival uh, lymphatics. The conjunctiva has a high lymphatic drainage. So now when these antigens are carried to the nearest lymphatic, they develop antibodies against it. And that's how the immune reaction occurs. And that's how it can attack the other eye also now. Okay. So clinical features, what do we need to know? First of all, this disease can have a period of latency. It can be, you know, even five days later or it can be many years later. So the important factor to determine is, is to remember the history that there was a surgery or there was a penetrating injury to this eye now patient presence with difficulty in vision diminution or even significant vision loss the initial symptom can be difficulty near vision due to change in accommodation okay now there are there's pain redness photophobia and floaters um, if we look what all do we find we find usual uveitic features like the ciliary injection and uh, keratic precipitates which are granulomatous like mutton fat uh, keratic precipitates and there is obviously cell and flare in the anterior chamber uh, then we will find thickening of the iris and iris nodules okay and posterior sinica might be present which makes it more difficult to dilate the pupil intraocular pressure may be either be high or low if there is a ciliary body shut down then it will be low and if the inflammatory cells block the trabecular meshwork then it will be high now, if we look into the posterior segment, there can be vitritis, vitrit uh, vitreous membrane, papillitis, retinal vasculitis, exudative retinal detachments, and choroiditis. So, and we need to remember that there are small yellow-white lesions at the level of the choroid known as dallin pukes nodules, okay? Another thing to remember is the sunset glow appearance of the fundus due to the depigmentation of the choroid as well as changes in the RP. So these are classical things to remember like the Allen Fuchs nodules, sunset glow appearance, okay. And uh, secondary glaucoma cataracts can occur, sometimes even uh, CNVM can occur. So uh, differential diagnosis most importantly is uh, VKH. Uh, it is differentiated most importantly with the history of trauma not being present in VKH and uh, VKH will have skin changes, auditory changes and CNS findings. Next coming to investigation. So sympathetic ophthalmia is more of a clinical diagnosis but we need different investigation modalities to look more into the 
prognosis aspect that whether the medications are working or not so one investigation is b-scan ultrasonography here we can see thickening of the choroid so nowadays you know uh, edi oct are better tools to measure the choroid thickness then we have ffa so in ffa we need to remember in easy way that in the early phase there is hyperfluorescent hyperfluorescent spots which uh, towards the late phase goes into a pooling okay uh, that will be ffa then if we look into since it is uh, you know choroid is very specifically affected in this disease we will go for a icga if we go for a icga uh, what we will see is hyposinescent spots in the early phase of the disease they may either remain hyposinescent or they may become isocinescent okay so in ffa it was hyper now here we have hypo and then if we do fundus autofluorescence there also it is hyperfluorescent spots usually seen corresponding to the areas of this neurosensory detachments okay then uh, o oct is an important investigational modality in oct we see multiple serous detachments along the along with that we see something called bacillary layer detachment so here what happens other than the in the serous detachments we have the R neurosensory retinal detachment you know the rpe the rest of the retina the neurosensory retina is detaching from the rpe but in the bacillary layer detachment within the rods and cones the myoid the inner segment myoid is detachment so it is causing septations within those uh, detachments this is important because when we look into the prognosis of the disease these septations disappear early and tells us that the uh, you know it's a good prognosis it's improving so then we have opta which helps us uh, to know about the choreo capillary flows and wherever there are ischemic spots we see the uh flow voids which also helps in prognosis because very easily they start filling up and we know that the disease is improving now coming to the management uh, usually uh, the initial management is a pulse therapy of methyl prednisolone which is one gram per day intravenous into three days then we start oral uh, prednisolone which is one to 1.5 milligram per kg per day which is continued for two to three months now simultaneously with this oral prednisolone we also begin with immunosuppressives most commonly azathioprine or mycophenol at morphetal so this drugs will continue since these uh, immunosuppressive agents need a certain time for their action to begin the interim period is covered by the steroid and once their action has come into place these steroids can be slowly tapered and withdrawn now if it is maintained the clinical condition is maintained with these immunosuppressive drugs then well and good we continue them on those drugs if it is refractory then we use higher uh, or stronger uh, medications like cyclosporin cyclophosphamide which are systemically more toxic so we keep it for refractory cases only if they're not responding to this also then we can move on to other biologicals like uh, tocilizumab okay now uh, if we are putting people on immunosuppressive drugs then we have to monitor the blood counts liver and kidney function tests every two months uh, local therapies have also been considered like uh, if there's macular edema intravitreal uh, steroid works well ozudex has been used and have shown good results and intravitreal anti uh, anti vegf has been used if there's a tendency for cnvm or cnvm has developed in these uh, patients so earlier it was believed that you know a traumatic eye with lot of iris prolapse and all should be enucleated to prevent sympathizing disease but that's not the thought of uh, school of thought anymore and uh, the only way of preventing is a early repair and a good repair and uh, you know keeping patients on the follow up to see that the other i know such inflammation is developing and an early diagnosis which can help us initiate the treatment in time so that uh, the prognosis of the disease remains good so that's all about sympathetic ophthalmia i hope everybody learned something and if you like this video please give it a like and share it with your friends and colleagues so that all of us can learn together bye bye